14. We find our foundational text for this particular series, and it reads, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. This is the series, the life-changing, life-building, life-blessing series entitled, What? Spirit-led. Amen. And this is Division 4 and Lesson Number 5. Division 4, Lesson Number 5. We're going to have a little review before we get on to the new information. Amen? Amen. In order for you to be spirit-led, in order for us to be spirit-led, we have to be born of the Spirit, right? Yes. Uh, we have to be filled with the Spirit, right? Yes. And then we have to stay filled with the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Okay. And then there's one more thing we have to do in order to be spirit-led, right? What do we have to do? We have to daily give what? Per mission to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, let's, let's review that again. What do we have to do to be spirit-filled? Give permission. Let's, let's review the whole list. First of all, you have to be born of the Spirit. In other words, you got to be born again. What's the second thing you have to do to be spirit-led? you got to be filled with the Spirit. What's the third thing you have to do to be spirit-led? You have to stay filled with the Spirit or be daily refilled with the Spirit. And then the last thing, which is really important, because and I left that as last because guess what? You can be you can be born of the Spirit. You can be filled with the Spirit. You can be daily refilled with the Spirit. But if you don't give permission to the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you, what, what will happen? He won't. He won't. If you don't give him permission to lead you and guide you, he won't. So because, because he's a helper, not the doer, and he's definitely not a violator of your will. And I have learned something from the Holy Spirit. I've learned that I can't make anybody do anything either. Anybody has learned anything about that? Anybody learned anything about that? You can't make anybody do anything. And what that means is you can't help anybody unless they want to be helped. You know, I said that on Sunday, didn't I? But what I did is I kind of left you hanging. I don't want to leave you hanging on that. You can't help anybody unless they want to be helped. Somebody say, but. but. There are three things you can't do. There are three things you can't do. What are the three things you can do? Number one, you can pray for them. Right? Number two, you can prophesy over them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speak faith over them. Over their life. Went in their face and behind their back. Oh, God, both. Yes. Seriously. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen to God. Yes. In their face and behind their back. Prophesy over them. And what's the third thing you can do? Anybody, anybody know? I got a CD for anybody who guess what the third thing is. You pray for them, you prophesy over them, and what can, what else? Huh? So show them love. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. She says, show them love. That's a good one. Okay, you get a free CD. The other thing you can do is, she said, please. Like, she said, you're giving me enough already. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. You, you miss Facebook and everything else. Uh, yeah, you can show them love. The other thing you can do is you can show them. This kind of relates to the same thing. You can show them a good example. Keep, keep being a good example for them. Pray for them, prophesy over them, but keep being a good example. And that includes showing them love. Because if you're showing them love, you know they're acting like, you know what, you know, that's you being a good example. And one day when they come to their senses, you're going to be the example that they follow. Amen? All right. Now, uh, amen. Now, the, the, the bad news we said, we're still in review, was that we don't know what to do by our own wisdom. And that's the truth. But the good news is that we do know what to do through the wisdom of God. Amen? Amen. And we said <coughs> some more good news. We can receive the wisdom of God by His Word and by His Spirit. Right? We can receive the wisdom of God by His Word and by His Spirit. And we said that when we receive it by His Word, that's 
hearing the word, reading the word, sitting under the word. But now, uh, when we receive it by his spirit, that's through prayer. Amen? Amen. All right, so we're going to receive it by his spirit. That's his spirit speaking to our spirit, and that's prayer because prayer is communication with God. It's not just talking to God. It's communication with God. What's the difference? He's talking and hearing. Yeah, you, you, you're hearing and talking. You're just both. So if prayer was just talking to God, we would definitely lose out on that because really it's what God has to say to us that's the most important. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's good for us to apologize and ask for forgiveness and all those things. But, but really, what God has to say to us is what we really need, which is the truth. We need to know what to do. Amen? Amen. We need his wisdom. He doesn't need our wisdom. <laughs> and we need his wisdom. Amen. So, so now, we said, we're almost finished with the review, we said that since we uh, communicate with God's spirit through prayer, um, we said that there's two, two main types of prayer, right? Prayer with understanding and prayer without understanding. Mm -hmm. And really, that's just a, uh, a, a term for praying in a known tongue and praying with an unknown tongue, right? Mm -hmm. Praying with understanding is praying with a known tongue. If your tongue is English, that's praying with understanding. But praying without understanding, that's a, that's a, that's a cold word for praying in the spirit. Or another way of saying it would be, it's a code word for allowing the Holy Spirit to help you to pray. And that's the highest, really, I, I have to say, uh, well, I'll say it like this. It, it's the prayer with the greatest uh, understanding. I'll say it like that. It's the prayer with the greatest understanding because the Holy Spirit understands more than your natural mind. Amen? Amen. Okay. Okay. I was getting ready to say something else, but Praying with understanding is very important when, listen to me very carefully, praying with understanding is very important when what you're praying is the word of God. Praying with understanding, praying in your own tongue, that's very important when you're praying according to and in line with and in agreement with what? The word of God. Because now you got something. See, because really, we don't understand anything in our natural mind. But when we just say well, what God says, now that's that's his wisdom. So that's that's how I understand it, right? Because it's what he said. All we're doing is is, is just agreeing. And, that, and, and and if you if you've been listening to me these last several weeks, you should have picked up the fact that this is the secret now. This is the key. I mean, I talked about it on Sunday, right? I said the secret to success, the secret to good success is agreement with God. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. Say agreement with God, agreement with God is, the secret is the secret and the key, and the key to, my to my godly success. The more I agree with God, the more successful I'm going to be. Now, you can go home now. <laughs> I mean, I'm just really that was very important what I just said. Well, last week we talked about God's power and man's faith. And speaking of being in agreement with God, we said that we must have faith in God. And we said that means uh, that means to have the faith of God, which is God kind of faith, as well as having faith in God. So when it says have faith in God, it actually means, yes, have faith in God, but it also means have the God kind of faith. So then that begs the question, what is the God kind of faith? Now that relates to what I said Sunday when I've been talking about uh, thinking like God, thinking his thoughts. Remember, thinking, we, we, we're trying to, this whole renewal of the mind is to get away from how we think. And to start thinking like he thinks. Somebody say, agreement again. Agreement. And all roads lead to Rome. Are you getting what I'm saying? All roads lead back to, I'm just trying to get my mind to agree with God. Yes, sir. I'm trying to train my mind to think like he thinks. Yes. And 
that's not, it's easier said than done because, because God uh, doesn't deal with fear. God doesn't deal with worry. Yes. God doesn't deal with doubt. Yes, sir. God, God don't even deal with the future or the past. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's, it, it's taking us a minute to try to think like God. Because God's not, God's not hoping that anything's going to work out all right. It's already all right. So we have to start... When, when you start hearing yourself saying things like that, you think it like God. When you start catching yourself more and more, you start hearing this come up in your vocabulary. You think it like God. You ever notice how the people that you hang around, you start you hang around, you start talking like them? Seriously, seriously. I gave you an example a couple weeks ago. I used my daughter as a reference when she said you would do it and you would like it. Remember, I, remember I gave you that example. Well, I just picked that up because I'm hanging around her. My point is, whoever you hang around and spend a lot of time with, you're going to start talking like that. I never, uh, all these vocabulary words that you see me pass on you guys, you know, I, I was never walking around talking about, well, the ramifications of, 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 until I went to Princeton. When I went to Princeton, everybody was talking like that. So I thought, because you in these little group sessions, you know, these guys be throwing out big words and stuff, and you'd be intimidated. You know, the ramifications, what are you talking about? You know? You know what I'm saying? So you start picking up these words because that's who you're hanging with. And if you're, out on the, if you're out on the basketball court, you know, like Spencer is with his top team out there, the number one team, and you know, somebody say, see, they probably don't even say selling booth tickets anymore. I don't know what they say now, Spencer. But, but in my day, they, they say, man, you just, you just sell them booth tickets. That's what they would say back then. That was back then when they had the horse and buggy, Spencer. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> but what they say now, only Spencer knows it because he's out there with him. And if somebody's talking some stuff, you know, what would they say? What did they say? Did they talk with smack? Uh, what, you don't have no game with you. You weak? You bring that weak stuff up in here and stuff? But, you, you know, you pick up what you're around. Now, um, so, we have to have faith in God. We have to have the faith of God. We have to speak with the authority of God. That's what we talked about last week. See that? See? Remember we talked about that? How do, how do we know how God talks? We have a couple of instances in the Old Testament where we see it, but we really get to see it in the in the Gospels with Jesus. And every time he's healing something, he just he just commands healing. Yeah. Get out of it. You know, he, he just he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't beg, doesn't ask, he doesn't say no long thing. He just be out, be gone, you know, boom. And so that teaches us how God speaks with authority. And then we said we can't doubt. And then where we ended up last week was we have to have now faith. Which leads me to the lesson for tonight entitled Now Faith. Somebody say now faith. Now faith. Point number one for tonight. We must have now faith. Now this is kind of interesting because I like the title yes. because it really says a lot. Um. Very familiar verse of scripture. Let's look at it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, now faith. Somebody say, now faith. Now faith. That, that's that's uh, pregnant with implication. Now faith. Now faith. Faith is now. In fact, the first three words are, now faith is. Mm -hmm. That's it. If you really want a good definition of faith, stop right there. Now faith. Is. 